morning, buenos días. It's been so good to be here this weekend. This year has been so special to my wife and I and my entire family because I've been just traveling all over America, visiting Bible colleges, churches, and we are especially thankful this weekend to be here at Crossroads. It has been just a, a, an experience that we will never forget. We were blessed to be sent out into the ministry by this uh, great church here a long time ago, in 1984. And back then, uh, my wife and I decided to go back to Mexico. And we couldn't do it, what we have done throughout so many years, without your help and prayers. Someone told me, I mentioned uh, last night, don't ever become a missionary because all missionaries do is go around begging for money all the time. Who wants to do that? And really, really, in, in our own experience, it has been going around giving thanks to wonderful people, like the people here at Crossroads. This year, it's been so different because uh, they have named me the first Hispanic uh, president for ICAP. Well, <laughs> That's what it used to be called the National Missionary Convention. And I told uh, my good friend Dave Emson, I really don't know what Hispanic means. I'm just uh, Mexican from Mexico. <laughs> and I like, uh, you know, the tacos and the hot sauce and stuff like that. <laughs> then I, I began to think about the word Hispanic, and I thought maybe I, I do am a Hispanic because I am his and I panic all the time. <laughs> Especially when I'm among people. This I come in Kansas City is going to be a great, a great one. We, we plan to have a very Latin flavor. In fact, we have planned a mariachi, mariachi band on opening night. This is going to be a great professional group of ladies from uh, University of Texas in San Antonio. And they have played around the world. They will be there to do like an opening song or two. My entire family will be up there. This convention is so great because it connects so many missionaries from all over, all, all over the world. There is going to be like 550 exhibits from work around the globe. So you, you can actually spend a whole day just talking to these missionaries doing work in different parts of the world, from Bible translation to children's work, relief help, church planting, help to the needy, so, so many ministries there. Then our speakers are going to be wonderful speakers. In fact, uh, Pastor Barry is going to do the, the Friday sermon in the evening. And for the first time ever, we, we will have a fellow from uh, Mexico. His name is Gonzalo Garcia, our church planter in the city of Tepic. He's the one person that I know of who can actually recite the New Testament by memory. In Spanish, of course, the official language in heaven. So he will be speaking there, and you want to miss that on, on Saturday. I am very, very excited about Saturday night because we are going to dedicate, commission a family to plant a Hispanic church in Kansas City. That's going to be a tangible fruit of this convention in Kansas. There are 230,000 Hispanics in, in the Kansas City metropolitan area, and no Hispanic church for them to be ministered to. So everything is said. The people are behind the project, all the churches in the area, and we are going to dedicate this family to plan a Hispanic church in Kansas City. You know, there is like 55 million of us here already. I tell my American friends, uh, somehow we're reclaiming the territory <laughs> so, in some areas. So you don't want to miss ICAM. That, that was my commercial for ICAM this year. Thank you for listening to me. You are the light of the world. 
It is such a beautiful theme uh, for, for this particular weekend here. Because uh, in reality, God, uh, Jesus Christ is talking to followers, to disciples, when he says to us, you are the salt of the earth, and you are the light, the light of the world. The scripture says uh, right there, in, in, it's, it's on the... on Matthew 5, 13 and, uh, through 16. When I was uh, teaching at a Bible school in Eagle Pass, Texas, one of the subjects that was assigned to me was uh, the life of Christ, the teachings of Christ. And I remember uh, studying this beautiful passage on the Beatitudes in Matthew 5, in which uh, Jesus tells his followers, you and I, that we are to be different people. We are to have a special attitudes in all circumstances in life. In fact, uh, the word beatitude is uh, makarios. If your name is Makaria or Makario, that means you are totally happy. Totally happy regardless. The island of Makarios in, uh, in Greece was a beautiful island. I, I am thinking almost like a, some of the places that we have in Mexico, like Cancun and Acapulco, so beautiful. But when people lived in these islands, in the island of happiness, they really didn't need anything else from the outside world. And Jesus, through these uh, teachings, is telling us, you, my disciples, are, are, to, are to be special people in this world that needs so much of the light and the salt that we can offer to so many people. I remember teaching uh, back then to my students, and, and I told them, uh, today we're going to go to the elderly home here in town, and we are going to be salt and light to the people that need Jesus there, need a little bit of happiness. So I chose uh, Santiago. Santiago was uh, a, a fellow from Oaxaca, a pure Indian. He had learned some Spanish at the school there. And he was kind of quiet. So we went to the elderly home, and the first door that we knocked in, this uh, older person is there, obviously in need of cheering up. And Santiago tells him, you know, brother, sometimes we go through life and we feel lonely and we need a little happiness. And the old gentleman told Santiago, be of good cheer, my young man, Jesus is with you. You are the light of the world. Can you believe that? We were out there trying to give cheer, trying to share the light, and, and, and he was one that already had this light in his life. It is so beautiful to consider light, especially in this time, in these times, because we can obviously think of a physical darkness and also spiritual darkness. I was born in central Mexico where there was no electricity. Yes, I am that old. No electricity. And the nights there could be really dark, dark, dark. Plus, the people around there didn't have any windows. So there was no electricity. So when it, it, it became dark, it really was dark. I mean, you could, you could almost uh, have an accident with, with your own hand because you couldn't see it. It was that dark. And what I noticed in this kind of society of uh, physical darkness, there were other byproducts of that in which the people constantly lived in fear, in superstitions, in ghosts, in all, in all kinds of uh, darkness, even uh, as we walk through life. We spend the, the nights in fear, close the doors because the witches are going to be flying, uh, flying by. Don't go out because this owl is going to jump on you and tear up your head or something like that. 
It was that kind of an atmosphere that I noticed was the product of just being in darkness all the time. But then, brothers and sisters, we have the spiritual darkness, which is even worse than, than just physical darkness. The human race has gone through so many different areas in which uh, there is uh, times in which there is total uh, spiritual darkness in all areas of, of life. In fact, some of the centuries in the Middle Ages were precisely called that the Dark Ages. And they were so known because uh, there was basically a vicious cycle of darkness, ignorance, no advance in nothing. The people lived their short lives. There was a lot of disease. When you see these beautiful castles of Middle Ages, in reality, they were not that beautifully. We are to see them in present day eyes. For one thing, none of them had, had, had any bathrooms. If you want to buy one of these castles, you have to quickly install bathrooms. People just uh, threw uh, whatever was uh, disposal through the windows. And those uh, beautiful uh, nights of the Middle Ages were only like uh, four feet, five inches. I would be like a giant besides one of them. <laughs> so those were the dark ages. People were, uh, you know, in this type of an environment that really there was really very little hope. Even the church, as we knew it, was part of these uh, dark uh, times. And that's what we call the dark ages. And then enlightenment came in. And, and if you study history, that's when the Bible began, uh, started to be read and Christ could shine again upon humanity. So what is the present darkness that we are now living in? The modern world is viewed right now as a prosperous world. Economics are good. Finances are a lot better than 100 years ago. We live better lives, in essence. Those uh, years of uh, living uh, short times, the, the average life has really gone farther now, so people can live older. There is a lot more medicine, a lot more of everything. Physical prosperity has been the mark of postmodern times. This year, the theme at ICOM is going to be glorifying God globally. And the idea is that God has always ha had a global heart based on Psalm 67. May God be gracious to us and bless us. May his face shine upon us so that your ways may be known throughout the earth. May all the peoples praise you, O oh God. May all the peoples praise you. And with the advent of, of, of all this prosperity, the globality has really come to societies. This is a mark of postmodern society. To me, it's very interesting that uh, the business community was the one that came up with uh, going global, global, breaking down barriers. Norman and I live right on the border, and we, we know about borders. We know about protectionism, about safety, about culture, about languages. But now the business, the business people of the world decided that we are going to go global. We, this is the mark of these times. And in the process, they have made millions and millions of dollars. Our community in Piedras Negras has been changed literally through globalism. Globalism. So there is a lot of uh, American companies and all other companies that offer employment to the people. And Piedras Negras has been transformed. It is so beautiful to know that uh, this idea of God was first taken, taken by the business world. And in the process, they have made uh, millions and millions of dollars. 
Right now, the church has the opportunity to take this globalism and make this world better for everyone involved. That's, that, that is the whole scope of the salvation through Jesus Christ, that we can make this world better. Because we do have our own problems in this postmodern world that li we live in. The human rights movement have turned around so many wrongs, and in some cases they have gone a little over, overboard. Now we can respect individu individu individual, individuals, races, respect each other. People in general live a lot better than they did before. But this globalism has always has also brought a downside to it. With the women's liberation, divorce, divorce rate, rates exploded. There is more violence in the family. We have a huge problem in Mexico because there is a lot of violence in the family. And to me, the, this has to do with, you know, the the, the couple fighting for rights among each other. It's slavery in the form of sex trafficking and child abuse has made a huge comeback in society. And this has been helped through the media, through the internet and, and those things. Internet access has made it easier for people to be enslaved to pornography and other sins of the flesh. So we do have a little bit of a dark side to, to the times, or too much of a dark side to the times that we are living in right now. Now attitudes have changed to many people, and, and we have become more tolerant. To me, the, the idea is that this gray influence has overcome society in a way that we, have, we are now used to things that we were not used to a generation ago. And Pastor Barry, I, I really love to read his uh, Facebook comments. And it really caught my attention, this one that mentioned that this society is more tolerant than our forefathers were. And then he ended the comment by saying, be careful what you tolerate today. So it, it, it is a lot easier for people in, in society today, it, there is a huge gray area to declare themselves, you know, I am uh, gay, but don't dare to say, and people will applaud in Mexico. We can, we can be uh, watching TV there, and they will applaud. But don't, don't dare to mention that you are a Christian because then you will be shown, you know, you will be put down. So things have changed, and we have a lot of work to do, obviously. In another huge difficulty we have now is uh, the drug culture. In Mexico, dear brothers and sisters, last, in, in the past four years, four years, 100,000 people have died, 100,000, over the drug wars in Mexico. We, we get to live it every day right, right there on the border. Thank God things are getting better. But these criminals worship la Santa Muerte, the holy death which is, in essence, a, a skeleton with a gown and a sickle there. And they actually put up uh, shrines, and they, they worship Mother Death, like, uh, this is where we want to go. This is a cult that is growing more than any other religion or cult in Mexico, with more than three million adepts in just four years. So we have a problem of violence Darkness in the spirit of young people. Most of those 100,000 that have died are 26 years and younger, 
85% of them. And we live it every day. There is no heart to these, to these people. Darkness is totally in their hearts. One of the things that they love to do is uh, hang the enemies on overpasses. And about three months ago, there was uh, four of these young guys hanging naked on an overpass in the city of Monterrey. One, one, one passerby noticed that one of them was still alive. So he stopped his car and tried to bring him down to help him. And uh, there was a black pickup truck across the street, and a fellow with a machine gun got off and said, you, you don't bring him down, you let him up there to die. That, that's, that's the whole idea. How, how can you become so dark, darkened in your heart to do such a thing? Every day in, at the ministry, I even, I even have a AK-47 magazine that the criminals dropped uh, right, right at, at our parking lot because our, our ministry is on the edge of town. So we live in a dark world, nevertheless. But Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. We are called, brothers and sisters, to shine. To shine. Please forgive me, I, I lost a little bit of a track on time, but I have a watch over here. I hope you don't have a switch somewhere that I disappear if I go over. <laughs> some, some preacher friend told me, you can, you can preach as long as you want to. The people will live at 12 on the spot. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, I was going to be left uh, up here just talking to myself. <laughs> there is difficulties in witnessing in, in our world today. Because, as I mentioned, we have been shown. Today, brothers, we, in, in a way, are getting used to, to the darkness a little bit. And that's a little dangerous. Your pupils start to open up, and then you don't, you don't see it anymore. As we minister in Piedras Negras, our ministry was close the city dump. An open-air city dump with a lot of trash burning all the time. And the trash with the wind and the smoke came our way, but a lot of trash around the ministry. And guess what? One, one good friend from uh, Indiana once told me, there is a lot of trash around here. So I looked around and couldn't see it. I was so used to seeing the trash. And then he said, look, there is papers, there is plastic, there is all. I needed to, to have my eyes open to the standards of cleanliness. And this is exactly what's happening in, in our society today. We need a, a little bit of uh, eye openers so we can clearly see what's right and what's wrong. And don't dwell in the gray areas. Because what? Because light will contain evil. Light will contain evil. Sometimes it is difficult to identify non-Christians from Christians. Nothing is uh, uh, black and white. Everything is relative nowadays. Living the gray in the middle ground, in midwater, between green and dead, between hot and cold. But la the light will contain evil all the time. If you want to stop crime, set up a light, a street light, and that, that'll happen. Because uh, the evil cannot prosper in light. I mentioned to you the, the darkness through the violence. We have had two funerals related to violence in, in our church where I preach every, every Sunday. Every Sunday. One was my own nephew. After three and a half years, we, we decided to have a memorial service without his body being present. He, we never found him. The church in, 
in Tepic, Nayarit, where the fellow that will preach at ICAM uh, serves every week, preaching. One police officer came, Fernando was his name, came to accept the Lord. Obviously, when you have the light, darkness cannot prevail. So he was, this police officer was living a clean life. But the criminals told him, if you don't do what we tell you, you will pay the consequences. Picking up his son, his 13-year-old son from middle school, on his motorcycle, he noticed as his son was coming out of school that a, a, a pickup truck had stopped with, with guys in it. So he tried to protect his son. And they came out with machine guns and just shot him right there in front of his son because he wouldn't follow the orders. Gonzalo, the, our, our church planter, preached at, at his funeral and 400 police officer, officers from the city of Tepic were listening to the message. And at the end of the message, 11 came to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior and decided to walk in the light, to walk in the light, to do what was right. Then that's what the gospel will do. It will contain evil. And we, it will also guide us in all ways of life. Jesus had compassion on the people. As polit politics for elections in all countries in the world, I tell my American friends, I, I don't like to talk about politics, but I'm a dual citizenship. I have the citizenship in, in Mexico and here. And I voted there and here, and I lost uh, both elections. Somehow. <laughs> Somehow I lost. And the, but these leaders say, follow me. We'll, we'll take you to, to better places. Follow me. But Jesus is the one that can really guide people like the light that shines on us. And then, I really like the last declaration in the scripture where it says that they, see your, that they may see your good deeds and they will glorify God. The best thing to shine, brothers, is when we do something. The light bulbs can only give light when they're in movement, when they're moving. That's when they shine. You cannot sit idle and proclaim to be the light and just do, not do anything. You cannot be neutral. We need to do something. When we came to El Ejido, there was the dump there. We saw three children die of rabies contacted by, by dogs at the dump. One young man that I baptized drowned swimming in the river trying to get into America. His boss liked him so well that he told me, what are we doing to help these, these people? You, we need to do something. You cannot just tell them, go in peace. My children who, who live in San Antonio, they tell me, what are you doing in Mexico? You need to come to America. It's safer over here. Wouldn't it be great to get, for me to get up one day and preach to my brothers there? Be safe, brothers. I'm going over to America to safety. We need to stay there and do something good so the light can continue to shine. And lives can be transformed. I could sit here and tell you so many testimonies, but I want to finish by quoting a beautiful hymn of my childhood. Many of you may remember this hymn. It says, uh, bright in the corner where you are. How many have heard that thing? Bright in the corner where you are, brilla en el sitio donde estés. Do not wait until some deed of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your life afar. To the many duties ever near you, now be true. Bright in the corner where you are. Bright in the corner where you are. Bright in the corner where you are. Someone far from the harbor, you may guide across the bar. So bright in the corner where you are.